Hello Taurus and welcome to your 2019 yearly forecast. Wow, Taurus, what a year of change it is going to be for you. If you thought that uh, you copped a little bit of it at the end of the year, in those last three months before Christmas, well, I'm here to tell you that 2019 is going to be full of changes for you. What's really interesting is that, um, you know, you've been having this whole push and pull in the area of truth for you okay and I really feel like you're at this kind of point where you're you're getting rid of anyone in your life that doesn't feel true so anyone that's kind of you know held truth from you or deceived you in some which way you're, you're getting to the core of who your friends are and I feel like that's been a theme with you for a while probably since Uranus entered Taurus back in 2018 now this is probably the biggest planetary shift that you're going to have in all of 20 uh, 19 it's pretty much a major turning point in your life okay Uranus is uh, currently in Aries and it's going to be there until about the 6th of March until it enters back into your sign and it's all about focusing on the area of you on your self-image on your outlook in life on your personality on who you want to show to the world and who you want to be in the world on your legacy all of that kind of stuff in terms of your actual identity okay um, and the most important message I guess I want to pass on to you is that be open to change. We have three eclipses in um, uh, Capricorn, well, two in Capricorn, three in Capricorn, one in um, Cancer, my apologies. And it's going to be a big year of change for everyone, but most importantly for your sign, as I said, I'm focusing on self-image. Now, the big things are, the big events are the 5th of January. We have a partial... Um, uh, solar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn um, there's like a, a bazillion planets in Capricorn well maybe not that many but it seems that many and what this is doing is having a huge focus on Saturn and Saturn for you is really ruling um, your world views okay you've got Pluto that's been focusing on this as well so for you for some of you you could have been feeling like spirituality philosophy um, you know all of those things being brought to the fore for you and it's causing you to need to speak your truth okay um, and this year it's going to keep coming up for yourself it's going to keep coming up at these eclipses now I just want to point out another big part is July July is going to be a challenging month for everyone um, we literally have Mercury going retrograde from the 7th to the 31st, but we also have a Cancer solar eclipse on July 2nd. And this is all about communication for you, okay? The North Node is in Cancer and the South Node is in Capricorn. What does that mean? And it's very basic terms, the North Node is where you're going. So Cancer is a sign of the mother of the Zodiac, right? Nurturing. Um, really looking at self-care self-love and this is what it is for you in this year right challenging your beliefs and bringing it back to yourself and being able to have confidence and self-faith um, in yourself within yourself and the south note capricorn is all about status um, it is the sign of the father of the zodiac so that's where you're coming from and this is where you're moving to so i think it's really going to be a big year for a lot of you about travel um, there's a lot of teaching aspects and elements going on so if i'm talking in this reading and i talk about career and you're retired or you're currently not working right now then there's a lot to come through about what you can teach and what you can give into the world um, and for a lot of you, it's also about how you're seen. So if you want to get published or really grow as an artist, as a star, this is a year for you. It's almost like a comeback year if you could find a want of a better word, right? A year of change, as I said, but positive change. The big thing for you will be, again, about Capricorn and the focus on philosophy, long distance travel, your beliefs. And there'll be another eclipse in the sign of Capricorn on the 26th of um, December. So right through to the end of the year, this theme is going to carry through. And what's really interesting is in your uh, spread that I've done here for you, January through to December, you have a lot of cards of spirituality, faith, thought, emotion, intellect. So these themes are going to be brought up for you if they haven't been brought up already uh, from the new year. So it's all about coming back to soul, coming back to your self-expression coming back to who you are truly at your core just be careful watch your communication in um, July when I said you've got that eclipse in um, cancer yeah you'll probably come across not how you meant to and that's something to note um, and like I said to you before this year is a big year of change for you you're really getting rid of anyone in your life who's not telling the truth who's not being open to you if you haven't done so already 
All right, but let's get into your reading because it's a little bit exciting. Um, the cards that I'm using is a deck called Dreams of Gaia Tarot. It's not traditional tarot. There are different cards that represent different themes. So you're not going to see all the same major arcana, but I'll talk you through it as we go through. I only use this deck for really um, uh, quite spiritual readings or full annual year readings or twin flame readings. So you won't see it come out too often. But to back it up, I also have the traditional Rider weight, which you would see on many YouTube channel you would have seen before. So I'm going to use this as qualifying cards uh, for each month. Now I've split the reading in two. I've got six months from January through to June because I wanted to get an idea of that six months. We generally only read when it comes to tarot in a six month period because the energies can change. And then I've got an overarching energy for how you're going to be in those kind of months. And then I've got another six months from July through to December that's kind of giving me some more detail. So I'll focus on the first six months of the year with you now and then we'll come back to the, the next six. Now, what's really interesting is you start off January with the Queen of Air. So um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So that could be someone that's quite important in your life. Um, or it could just be your kind of energy. You remember I told you you're not taking any crap. You're cutting. You want the truth and you want to get through to the truth. It's really interesting. Um, the qualifying card that came out on that was the card of the Empress. So I'll get back to that in a minute. But it's all about abundance, right? I told you change was coming. Um, Queen of Fire, and then you have a qualifying card of the star, so Aquarius. Ace of Swords, and you have the King of Wands. A lot of people in your spread, Taurus, a lot of people around you. New love coming in, Taurus. You have the Two of Cups on the Seven of Cups, and that's for you in April. Lots of choices. Um, additional guidance on May, thank you. Yeah, so I'll talk you through what I see here. And this is kind of the theme that I was talking about, change, communication, questioning your beliefs, who you are and who you want to be seen in the world. You start off the year with the card of the Queen of Air and the Empress. So do you remember how I was saying um, the North Node is in Cancer and it's all about how we nurture ourselves? Well, you know, you couldn't find a better card to kind of talk about that energy than the Empress. She is the nurturer. She is like the mother of the Zodiac. But these two cards together are almost polar opposites. The Queen of Air is someone that is quite uh, logical, uh, very thought process driven, um, very much, um, you know, composed and um, intelligent because she's been through a lot but to have these two energies together I mean you can kind of almost see even though they're two different decks the difference in the energy right you've got this one very clear cut you know focused ready to go through cut the sword get to the heart of the matter and then you've got this one here that's more like nurturing grounded um, safe and secure the empress does represent your sign Taurus so it's interesting to see this come up for you in January as you're coming into that January 5th solar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn fifth or sixth depending on where you are in the world for the Aussies watching it is actually the sixth Sunday the sixth now, what this shows to me is that you're finding, as I said to you, this push and pull about who you are and what you want to achieve and wanting to be this kind of have this nurturing energy. Some of you could be a mother and it's very much finding that push and pull on your identity between being a mother and, and being yourself again, finding yourself again. Um, and I feel like that's going to be a big theme for you. Remember I said... This is a major turning point, a major turning year in your life. So you really are going to readdress who you are as a person, how you present yourself to the world, how you look physically. It's a year of transformation when it comes to you and your internal being. And that couldn't be even more prevalent for those that are parents, mothers or fathers. February is really interesting. So you have the queen of fire coupled with a star. Again, a fantastic combination. So. The Queen of Fire is all, she's the Queen of Wands, right? She's all about action and wanting to go out and conquer the world. And then the star is the sign of Aquarius, which is kind of cool to have it in February. So for some of you in Aquarius could be quite important. But this for me, this combination is all about your passion and your drive and wanting to achieve dreams coming true. So maybe something that you've been working towards. It could be something that you've wanted to publish. This is a great year if you've got a project or a book or a PDF or something that you've wanted to put on Amazon or publish or get out to the world. This is a great year and this in particular is a great month to do so. Um, 
you know, like I said, Pluto's in your sign, Uranus is coming back into your sign. So it's really changing your worldview and how you look at life. It's questioning your um, spirituality, your philosophy, your freedom. Um, there is a focus on higher education. So for some of you, it could be actually finding out that you've got an approval to go back and study. It's something that you've been wishing for and wanting for. Beautiful start to the year. So far, you've got this nurturing energy and then you've got this energy of growth and, and abundance. So it's beautiful. What's interesting then as you move on, you have in March the Ace of Swords coupled with the King of Wands. Now, I love this combination because it's action and decisiveness. It's like the universe coming in and giving you the clarity you need to make the steps you need to take. Now, remember I said that you had the Queen of Air, so um, she was in January, right? And I was saying how that's very clear cut, like decided, considered, uh, logical thought patterns. Well, I see more of that coming in for you when it comes to March. This is the card of passion of um, someone who knows what they're doing, where they're going, who want, they knows what they want to bring in. And this combination is very much you cutting out all the shit, Taurus, and just going, I'm going for what I want, for what makes me happy. It's very much a question about, um, you know, these eclipses are going to make you question about what emotionally brings you joy. OK, and, and for some of you, you've gone through great change in the end of last year. You know, some of you left partners, some of you would have changed your careers, really big stuff, depending on where other planetary alignments were in your chart. But for now, it's actually finding coming back to you, finding your compass again and going, what what are you no longer going to tolerate, Taurus? And that's for you. Any your your BS radar is going to be off the charts like you're really going to be sensing anyone who's like telling you porky buyers and you're going to be cutting them out of your life and moving forward with confidence about what you're bringing in. And, you know, it's important to note, too, to have confidence in what you are doing, Taurus, because I feel like sometimes you are. Um, you know, a sign that focuses so much on actually getting things done and so much on the procedure and the way of doing things that sometimes you forget to actually take a step back and focus on all you have achieved. Now, I just do want to point out that there is a couple here. I have the King of Fire and I have the Queen of Fire sitting there. So for some of you, there could be um, a, S, a fire sign that's quite important in your life. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This could be someone that you're meaning because as you go into April, you have the Two of Cups coupled with the Seven of Cups. It's like, bam, you meet an absolute incredible kind of soulmate kind of connection. Um, the Two of Cups for me is deeper than just, you know, the word that's flown around flippantly and a lot of tarot readers like soulmate, but it's, it's that true meaning of the mind. This is someone that not only can you be yourself with in body, mind and soul, and remember this is a big year for you on your focus on philosophical beliefs, on spirituality, on what it is that you give, how you serve, um, your freedom, um, how you promote yourself in the world and what you want in a partner for those that are single or for those that are you know recently single and looking is someone that actually gets you on that level that inspires you to be more. Now, coupled with the Seven of Cups, this could just be that you're in this really dreamy, illusionary state when it comes to April. You could have just met someone um, before your birthday, or you could be meeting someone on that cusp as you go in um, to that birthday period. Now, remember what I said astrologically that Uranus would be moving back into your sign about the 6th of March. So for those of you that have the early birthdays, for those that are born at the beginning and the first deacon of Taurus, you're going to feel this energy strong. I really feel like for some of you, you're meeting a potential life partner. And it could be a fire sign. But, you know, don't get too caught up in the signs in a general reading for an annual reading, right? As you're coming into May, so further in your birthday month, you have the Hermit coupled with, what have I got here, Air. So for me, this speaks very much a month of mental chatter. Now, remember what I said to you that this year is all about your philosophy and your beliefs and going backwards and forward. But one of the, the biggest challenges for you, um, Taurus, is your self-criticism. You know, with the North Node being in Cancer, it's really about nurturing yourself. And these two combination of cards speaks about... Um, 
being a little bit hard on yourself for who you are and for what you want to achieve in the world. The Hermit speaks about wanting to retreat. It could be that this new person that's come into your life in the previous month or this new energy, this new connection has made you really question who you are to your core in a good way, not in a threatening way, but just really made you retreat and go, wow, you know, who am I? Who do I want to be? I really, this person's made me light up and I want to step up so that I could be the best partner, wife, father, mother, whatever it is for this person potentially. Because then as you come into June, you have this incredible um, combination of the King of Cups and the Card of Thought. So the King of Cups speaks about um, a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, at the very basis of um, the card. But it also speaks about someone being very loving. And I feel like, Taurus, this is the energy that you're trying to take on. Remember, I said to you, this is a year of change. You're going through this great change when it comes to who you are in the world and what it is that you bring to the world. And I feel like one of those changes is about nurturing yourself and being more nurturing to others when it comes to your intimate relationships. Now, the card of thought, as I said to you, the major arcana is slightly different in this deck, and I'm trying to find it for you. There it is. So it speaks about um, that, that going within, right? Um, law of attraction, uh, positive, negative, the, the, the both the yin and the yang. And you can kind of see that in the symbolism of the card. You know, you've got light and dark and then you've got day and night, that kind of thing. Um, I, the, the meaning of this card is I think, therefore I am, right? And it speaks to about the, your, how your thoughts shape your reality. Um, law of attraction states that whatever you think you'll draw to you so if you think in a negative headspace what's going to happen you're going to draw negativity to you now I know that's easy for me to say as a reader on the other side of the camera and I've been there where I've stayed in this perpetual self kind of doubt phase for quite a long time but now when I notice those things coming up I pull myself out of them very quickly and I turn to the tools that I've built around myself to actually go you know what that's just not true. That's my little negative self, self alley, put her back in her box. And I know what I bring to the table. I know my worth. And that's the invitation for you in this month of June is really about going within and actually finding who are you to your core. And this is the month for you just before you get to that cancer eclipse where you're going to be doing a lot of reflection. You know, it kind of starts for you in May, but it carries on mainly in June after your birthday, where you actually start to think about who you want to be in this world. Um, what you want to think and the important thing that, about this card is and i'll read it to you it says thought creates reality thought is the second and one of the most dominant of all the influence cards in the deck for thought like emotion will determine the direction of your life your thoughts the way you think shape and create the world around you what and how you think is a true reflection of you as the face that looks back at you when you gaze in the mirror so, you know, it's, it's really quite a card of depth, right? It's like if you think that you are too thin and you think that for long enough, then, you know, what ends up happening, that's exactly what ends up happening. If you think that um, money is the root of all evil and you're never going to attract money back into your life, then what ends up happening, that's exactly it. If you think that you're not lovable, then, and you tell yourself that story for long enough, what ends up happening, then that's what you attract back in. Thought is at the very foundation of our consciousness, and some would suggest that without consciousness, we would not be human. So it's really about getting pure in your thoughts, your thoughts of self, and this is self-love for you coming in, right? What's cool is I drew for you at a card to kind of give me a theme of what your overall energy was for this period, for the first six months of the year, and we have death and rebirth. And Taurus, that couldn't be any more prevalent for what I was saying. It really is a year of change for you, and it's a death and rebirth of the person you once thought you knew to who's actually coming out to play. And I went the new Taurus. Bring the new Taurus out to play because it looks freaking awesome. All right, I've got to show you the next cards. So as we get into, what are we now, July, August and September, it's really interesting to see the kind of evolution. You have three of fire, two of swords, so choice again, so that's more mental activity. Uh, the card of faith, so that's what I was talking about, your spirituality coming through. You have heaven and earth which is the 11 of um, coin. So that would normally be like the page, um, I guess. And then you have the 11 of water. 
So this is would normally be the page of cups. So you have the page of coin and the page of cups side by side, and then you have the ten of earth or the ten of pentacles sitting side by side that when you come into December. The second half of the year, I have to be honest with you, looks absolutely incredible. For some of you, this soulmate that I was talking about, it is absolutely twin flame kind of stuff because you have two 11s side by side. Do you see that? Earth and water, Taurus and water. What did I say about it potentially being a fire sign or a water sign? Definitely see that here. Um, What's interesting too is that your overarching energy for the month is the king of swords, so the king of air. This is cutting to the truth, um, looking for honesty, looking for truthfulness in all your interactions. Now I have to call it out on the board, you do have the king of air and the queen of air up here. So for some of you that is a couple and maybe it is that the, the woman or the man that you're attracting into your life is very much a person of um, tradition, traditional values, of um, honesty, of self-worth um, all that that kind of goodness that i feel like you've been lacking for a little while taurus additional guidance on these three of ones please you're definitely beginning a new path though so that um that solar eclipse july moon that comes in the sign of cancer is going to be the one that shapes you okay that brings you forward <laughs> yeah eight of wands so fast moving action, change, ch -ch -ch change. It's coming for you. Two of swords, please, additional guidance. Thank you, Spirit. My goodness, it looks so good. It's just like this rebirth, exactly as the card says, death and rebirth. It's like a whole new person. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's the anxiety again. Am I worthy? Can I do this? Am I going to make it happen? You need to really get on top of that Taurus, okay? Because it's the only thing that I see holding you back this year. I mean, you have the two of cups, brand new love coming in. You have fertile abundance. You have the star, which is like dreams coming true. Um, I think what's giving you anxiety is about past hurt that you've had. That's what's um, fallen out on the card of faith when it comes to September. So I think that's about what I was saying before about needing to release that negative self-talk. Your past doesn't shape who you are. All you have is the present. All you have is the now. Okay, Taurus. Ten of Swords. Let's see if it comes out again. Thank you, Spirit. Additional garnets on the 11th of Earth. The Emperor. And then you've got the Chariot. And one more card on the Ten of Earth. So Ten of Pentacles, it's like financial security and abundance. Wow. Okay, I'm going to show you these in a minute. And then at the bottom of the deck, the Ten of Pentacles there. So it's like further confirming um, that card. That's another confirmation. Look, you know, July for you, as I said, it's going to be a big month. It's all about communication. And... Cancer, the solar eclipse, is going to be in your house of communication. So how you communicate to others. Watch your language, watch your text messages, watch um, how you come across to people that you love because you could come across as someone who's just like, I'm going to be doing my own thing and I don't care what you say. And although I'm all for that kind of um, focus and determination, you know, you don't want to get offside the people that generally love and care for you. This is a card of freedom, expansion, of travel, international travel. And this is a card of um, lots of communication. And it could be that um, your travel plans get haywire, go haywire when it comes to July. Mercury is retrograde, so be aware of that. I see a lot of you traveling internationally. Um, it could also just be how you're communicating comes across as very egotistical and arrogant when that's not your intention at all. As you come into August, as I said before, you have a lot of mental energy, two of swords and nine of swords. This is like my card of anxiety. It's that card 
um, that shows me someone who's in their head a lot, that negative self-talk. Can I do it one minute? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Um, and for those that are going through a year of philosophical questioning beliefs and spirituality or going through a spiritual awakening, it could very well be that you have a lot of sleepless nights or insomnia as you go through another level of ascension as you level up. It could just be that you're just like, wow, I, I don't know what is all this stuff that's happening. I'm now watching tarot on YouTube. How did this happen? I still don't know how it happened. You know, that, that kind of thing. It's, it's like that... Um, that self-doubt, that talk, that archaic kind of, um, you know, previous way that we've been raised to think and believe that all this stuff is kind of nonsense. You need to find your truth, Taurus, and in doing that, you'll feel more at home. And, you know, it's really interesting because that's the card of September for you. It's all about having faith in the stuff that you uncover, having faith in if you are going through a spiritual awakening or if you are going through massive change, that it's for the better. OK, this is showing me your past. I feel like a lot of you have gone through heartbreak. Um, maybe you separated from your partner. Um, maybe you lost a loved one and now you need to have faith that your life will renew and you'll have a, a rebirth. I feel like there was... Um, sadly a few deaths for a lot of you last year i'm seeing that energy very clearly spirit showing me now and if that is the case my my heart goes out to you because it's never an easy time but i feel like at the second half of the year you're finding your faith again you're finding your faith in what it is that you want to do and you're letting go of this energy and that only comes from deep inner work and taurus you know you can't hide from it saturn in capricorn is is calling you to kind of deal with all these things so you're being asked to kind of step up and deal with them and in doing that so that you can go through this change and be born anew what's cool is that october gives you a breath of fresh air you have the emperor coupled with the 11 of earth so this would normally be the page of earth okay but in this deck it all speaks about if you have a look at the balance there of harmony when it comes to the earth sign it's like lead being having a leader in your field being recognized for what you do this is a month where if you did want to publish something i feel like you could get the recognition that you finally deserve um, maybe it's that you also get a promotion it's something to do with career and your status within the world okay you are a leader in your field and you're being recognized for that and that's from all the inner work that you've done all this mental kind of anguish that you've gone through that you're kind of jumping on top of november looks even better 11 of water so 11 of cups or page of cups coupled with the chariot this is my yes card forward movement this is also a card that speaks about travel again international travel travel over waters it could just be long distance travel travel by car travel to somewhere far off country or maybe you are based in europe and you're traveling to uh, a different country by car or something like that but it's something that's going to bring you a lot of emotional fulfillment and happiness okay again for some of you as i said before this is a sign of twin flames coming together around this month and it only happens when you're finally able to release and let go of all the stuff that's happened in the past and i say that with even more confidence if i needed more clarity is that on the ten of pentacles i got another card that shows me twin flames so it's kind of like um I really feel for some of you as you go through this year of change as you step into finding out who you really are um, who you really want to be at your core not what your friends want you to be not what you you thought you'd be in high school not what your family wants you to be maybe you've only got young kids but stepping into who you really want to be for yourself you know I always say that the blessing of a lifetime and the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you really are it's about shedding your skin so you can step into this new light taurus and for you this is a card of uh, twin flames as i've said that before about uniting with your true life partner and for some of you you will find that this year taurus the moment that you unlock who you are and you step into your truth is when you'll attract this great love in for others of you you could actually be getting engaged or married in december it's there that card combination the ten of pentacles and the four of wands does speak to me of those things what's interesting is i said to you before you had the king of air which comes up as a couple so it's showing me that you're being very decisive being very assertive assertive my apologies with your thoughts and also and the flip side as i said to you before can cause a little bit of mental anguish and anxiety two cards that came out with this are the card of um 
depression so the five of cups and then the nine of pentacles which kind of speaks about um, really being abundant being attractive being who you are this is the card the perfect card that would sum up your year about letting go of this of that kind of mental anguish if you've suffered from depression if you've been a little bit in your shell if you've been really struggling I feel like that theme will play out for you this year but you're going to get on top of it and then you're going to walk into to 2020 like this an absolute rocking version of yourself completely new completely stable grounded financially abundant full of love full of happiness joy this is a card that shows me great fortune and Taurus with that it couldn't be a better year of change for you it's seriously you know a gorgeous um, trans transgression like how you not transgression transition how you go from the beginning of the year all the way through and seeing the growth that comes there is a little bit of that challenging energy around that eclipse that july eclipse but you're strong enough you're going to get through it taurus i have faith in you you just need to have faith in yourself right one additional card for love for the entire year for the sign of taurus for 2019 please show me I'll take the one I saw on top. It's not surprising that you get 21, the universe expansion, which is the card of world. So endings and new beginnings. And then one card for spirituality, which is so prevalent for you this year. One card for Taurus, please. That's the most important message. Thank you, Spirit. 20 and 21. Unity. So the universe and unity. I'll read you this from the book. Bear with me for a second. So in this particular deck, this speaks about the world, as I said before, about endings and new beginnings. Um, completion, perfection, voyage, success. It's really incredibly beautiful. Um, you're so blessed to have this card, Taurus. A journey is complete and you have expanded. New experiences will now come forward. Let go of all that has brought you to this point and create a new path. A lotus flower epitomizes the eternal creative heart. The same lotus began this journey on the beginning card. The, mag the magenta, blue and green represent the path that has brought you here. Magenta strengthens harmony in daily activities. Blue encourages loving, truthful listening and speaking. What they say about being a year of truth. Green brings freedom through acceptance and forgiveness. Allow the lotus to embrace you with empowering yellow, creative orange and the unconditional love of pink. All is well. The universe celebrates the completion of a full cycle. A desire has or is about to be manifested and all is well. There is no need to suffer, justify or worry in order to create your heart's desire. What you have asked for is already on its way. Woohoo! <laughs> it's time to celebrate and honour all you have created. Give loving thanks to your supporters and collaborators. You stand fulfilled at the end of your journey. You, you, you nurture a seed and now its fruits are your reward. It is time to enjoy what you have created. Breathe in, look at what you have achieved and feel the love pouring in to spark a new journey. Wow, if that's not beautiful, I told you, right? Gorgeous. And then one last card for you the card of unity which for those that are in twin flame relationships this could be the very year that you get together with your flame in union harmony objective reasoning release expectation this card graces you with the healing energy of unity this mandala speaks directly to the diamond core at your center of the oneness um, that you are the element of air within this mandala is a reminder of all that cannot be seen grasped or tamed Air is the only element that is invisible. However, it can absolutely be felt just as we cannot see the effect our thoughts have until they impact and manifest in this physical world. What did I talk about? Uh, what did I say about thoughts becoming things, right? Air represents logic, clarity, disposition and spirit as well as the blending and unity of heart and mind. Consciousness is the key with its element. Be aware of the way your thoughts filter through your heart. Aim for them to create a grounded balance between your physical and spiritual selves. 
Allow yourself the freedom of detachment from everything in your world. Each and everything reflects each other. However, you can recognize your own reflection when you find yourself becoming reactive. When a reflection becomes challenging, see it as a loving teacher who's offering you an opportunity to grow. Release expectations of self and those you have placed on others. Feel the presence of unity rise once again within your heart. And that was your reading, Taurus, for 2019. An incredible year of change, growth, rebirth, expansion and unity. I wish you a wonderful new year. And if you found this reading helpful, please hit the like button. If you'd like to get a 2019 forecast for yourself, I am available and doing them. So you can have a look in the description bar below and book in with me quickly because I do book out pretty fast. All right, guys, have a great year.